my final number two. He will face off the winner of PLC and Ben Player. And if he beats that person in the semifinal number two, then Dave Winchester <laughs> will bring home the world title back to Australia since 2007. Ben Player taking it home. So every back Australian, in 2007. Oh my! Every Australian must just be going bizarre. Oh, right oh now. my! This is intense. Sasha Specker has succumbed to Jeff Hubbard's same scenario in the last second of that heat. That was incredible. We're gonna take our breath, take a quick breather. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> oh my! I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, we're live. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't love the action that we're seeing here. Ladies and gentlemen, Manny V here with Nick Mesritz, a.k.a. Mez. Jason Finlay, he's going to go down and get front row seat center, and he's going to watch what's going down from the, the competitors area. But Mez, how intense is this competition? Well, I'm, I'm hoarse from yelling Ooh. my nuts off. Oh, my, my uh, lungs off. <laughs> <laughs> Holy dooly, as yeah. you say. And so here's, here's the first wave from our PLC, spreading the legs. Oh, my. The Look long, at that. The long main is flowing. Comes out Woo. with a spit. Nice starter there from Pierre. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the talk at the moment is Dave Winchester through to the semifinal with a last 10-second point ride. And as we watch PLC driving through that pit, coming up high, out with a spit. Nice starter for Pierre. Wow, I can't believe what just happened in that last heat. We've seen it already a few times today. The last minute. Or well, the last 20 seconds, Manny. The last 20 seconds of that heat. The winner was determined, and it was Dave Winchester against Sasha Specker. But Sasha Specker, you can't take any way uh, from Sasha. Put on an incredible show. The South Africans should be proud of Sasha Specker. Now, out in the water. The final, quarterfinal, this is PLC, your 2011 world champion in the red versus the one and only bad player in the green jersey. This heat is, oh my, I don't know what it is. It's going to be crazy. It's crazy, mate. It is <gasps> crazy. And uh, we've got Ben and uh, Pierre. Ben's got the first wave. He got a 5.5. Um, amazing, amazing oh. scenes here at the Front On Pro. Um, Jeff sits out the front here with us. He's on edge. You know, it's not over yet. Um, what he's got to get through one more. He's got to get through these two riders here. There's three world titles between these two riders, and it's not done and dusted as yet. <laughs> oh so no. Jeff Hubbard is still in this. It's still in this, ladies and gentlemen. He's still there. He's still going for it. And um, amazing scenes. So uh, I got to settle down a bit, Manny. So uh, you yes. take it through, and I'll get my tongue untied. Oh, you're shaking. Why are you shaking? No idea, <laughs> mate. Wouldn't have a clue. Well, I'm shaking too, but you know what? This is probably a good reason. We're we seeing world titles up for grabs. We're seeing some insane bodyboarding action here at the NMD versus Frontone Pro. And we're just seeing some uh, just incredible um, storytelling being untold right now. We're watching history in the making. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to crown a 2012 IBA World Tour champion here at the NMD versus Frontone Pro. It wouldn't all be possible if it wasn't for NMD versus our friends at U Riding Alpha Campaign, 662 Mob, Like Bodyboard. They have been a, a big um, influence on this event. So we thank you all for, uh, for your support and the viewers as well. I'm telling you right now, this is where it's all going down. If you haven't already done so, make sure you like the IBA World Tour Bodyboard page. Uh, I mean, IBA World Tour Facebook page. And make sure you click on the little IBA World Tour black and white uh, icon logo and click on win. 
sign up. We got a ton of goodies from our supporters at this event, and you can walk away with some goodies for yourself. Mez and Manny V here giving it to you live from the NMD versus Fronton Pro. Oh, my. Yeah, still, still in shock, but... um. That, w that was a tough one. You know, it wasn't a high-scoring heat, and um, it was all that one was all Winnie's to lose, actually. You know, and um, not putting the the kibosh on the guy. He's a legend, and uh, it was just a tough heat. He lost his board during that heat. Snapped oh. the leash. Board went to the uh, the surf god. Smashed the bits on the rocks. But like, luckily, Jakey Stone was out there as Ben Player takes off on his first wave. Oh my, Ben Player! Nice first drop right there. Comes out of that section. Finds a big section and a nice extended roll right there. Ben Player on a solid first wave. That will definitely be higher than that 5.5 wave from PLC. So Ben Player, PLC, two former world champions out in the water. They are no stranger to what it takes to be a world champion. So they're going to go head to head. The winner of this heat, again, faces off with Dave Winchester. Well, Ben Player, he's been on fire today. He's driving through that barrel, looping roll here. Eyes are landing right on the foam. Perfect start for Ben. And Ben wasn't going to come into this contest. He already had his place secured for next year. And uh, he was debating whether he was going to do it or not. I sort of twisted his arm. We see this angle again here, <laughs> comes through it. Nice open one, bang. Nice loop there, good extension, smooth landing. And that De first wave has just dropped. We hear the judges, uh, the commentator, the beach commentator call that a seven. So that was a seven for Ben, opening wave. Oh. Yeah, so Ben wasn't going to come here. Um, I said, buddy, uh, we need you. And... Um, He's come over and he's, he's taking it easier. You know, he's got no stress on him and it shows in his surfing. He's relaxed and he's ripping. Here he goes again, this time on the left-hander. Oh, nice. Tons of speed, a big air forward right there from Ben Player on the left. But the lefts, you're going to do a maneuver. You're going to land over to the side of the wave. I don't know how the judges yeah. are going to score that, but uh, uh, you can see a little bit of texture on the water starting to form up on the wave. So that will probably be a big factor as we wind down today's competition. But here's another look at Ben Player. Well, the, the left's a big waves, Manny. And, you know, he's, he's, that's a good move. But it's just not connecting through on the inside. You saw Dave Winchester in the last heat try and invert and nearly got sliced and diced on the reef. Oh. So the local boys were telling me that the, uh, the lefts were going to start firing. And Seamus Mackham, our, our guru here with the uh, video cameras and all the editing stuff, he was sort of, thinking the same thing was going to happen. It hasn't done it yet. It might do that later on. And uh, we shall see. But it's still the right-handers. It's all about the right-handers right now. Oh, so once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is quarterfinal number four out in the water. PLC in the red jersey. He is Pierre-Louis Cosse from France against the Australian Ben Player. The winner of this heat will face off with Dave Winchester. Dave Winchester in semifinal number two has to win that he and he will be your new world champion well no one's going to give it to him manny and uh like we say both these guys three world titles between them and uh they're here to win it you know they're here if they got they got sponsors to 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 please they've got a uh, you know a, a pecking order amongst the boys and they want to come out on top and finish the year on a high on the other side of the draw now we have uh, jerry houston already through to the the semi and he will come up against Mark McCarthy. So South African on South African in the first semi. And Dave Winchester is waiting in the second semi for either Pierre-Louis Costes from France or Ben Player from Australia. Oh, my. So, yes, uh, our heart rates are getting back to normal. Uh, we can see Ben Player is just doing circles right now around PLC only because he's not in priority. So Ben's going to pick off any of the waves that PLC is not after. That could have been a really good wave for uh, Ben Player if he would have taken off. But again, we're sitting here comfortably on, you know, flat, stationary ground. We're not out there in the heavy conditions where it's six to eight foot, five, maybe four feet of water between them and the reef. So, And uh, unfortunately, I mean, I'm not putting anything on, the, on this footage you're getting, but when you're here, it's a whole different ball game. We're sitting on this cliff, looking down, there's about couple of hundred people looking at today's events and these things are just exploding onto what is a very shallow reef. Oh my, so fellow South African to uh, the riders, we have Douglas Cockwell. He just hit me up and uh, you know what, I gotta, I'll got. i get right back to that. But look at this, oh, yeah. coming around the section. Oh my, PLC with his textbook backflip. And he made that. And he made that. That was huge. That was, that was what the judges are looking for, Manny, is is a critical maneuver on a big wave in the most critical section of the wave. That's the simple criteria. And that's what Pierre did then. 
came down either section, pulled it right at the most critical point and landed it. And those things are hard to stick when the, when the foam ball is coming out. So Pierre will be well rewarded for that wave. And his first score was a 5.5, so that will better that, and that will put him into first place as we watch the replay. <coughs> BLC, he already knows it's not going to barrel, so he goes around the section, and right here he throws it into the backflip. He can do those things in his sleep on any wave. PLC throwing that first backflip under his belt, and the judges are liking that right there. 7.63. Here's another angle. Well, here he goes, headset, and he's eyeing the landing. When he's flipping, he turns his head on the lip of that wave, looks where he's going to land, flips it around, and the white water actually helped him on that occasion. So that's uh, Pierre's signature move, 22 years old from France. I believe he spends most of his time now in Portugal with his uh, longtime girlfriend, Root, and uh, currently ranked number four on the world tour. So he's looking to better that position. I'm not too sure if he can. I think these uh, positions are pretty much solidified. What they're going for is that very prestigious wind of the Fronton Pro, especially in these conditions. They can look back and say, you know what, remember when it was massive at Fronton? Well, I was one of those guys to take a win there. Well, I know that the guys have been knocked out, Jake and Ryan, Hardy and those guys and Jason. There's more of them. They're just bummed that they're not getting to surf in these conditions. They're like, you know, this is one of the best contests they've ever seen in the best conditions with two guys in the water, the whole world watching, and they just, they just want to be a part of it. So... Um, yeah, we've got amazing conditions here. A bit of wind, but the wind at front on doesn't mean it's all over. The wind will come and it will go as we move towards the high tide. And we have, what is it, man? We've only got, after this heat, three more heats to go. So we can take our time if we want to and look at the best conditions. And the, the riders, judges, contest organizers, and locals will bat, put their heads together and you know, have a bit of a powwow and see what's the best scenario as we finish this event. Well, I know uh, Ryan Hardy was in here. He actually said uh, in the earlier part of the day, he said, we're going to look at uh, two hours after the high tide mark, and that will probably be at the brink of saying it's just too heavy. So yeah. I think we are probably going to see the whole thing run today. Run through, okay. Run through all the way. So to make it all the way to the final, I hope these guys are, st are staying fully charged and fueled up with water and keeping hydrated because – that you need every bit of energy out there today to deal with these conditions. I mean, I can't believe Mark McCarthy is still, I mean, he got pounded in that uh, previous heat in um, quarterfinal number two, and here he is. He's going to face off semifinal number one with fellow South African Jared Houston. We've well, got so the boys paddling out the back here, but yeah, Manny, that, that was amazing. I mean, that was a, who we've got here, Pierre-Louis Costez on this one. PLC, now he finds that little barrel, big barrel, I should say, and he comes out. He's going to keep his eyes open, try to look for another section, but nothing there for PLC. It will better his 3.68, I ben believe. Ben on the one behind it. Oh, my. Into this one. Look at this. Bigger. Down the bottom, eyes the section, comes up, smacks a roll. Is, can, is he coming out of that one? Oh, Mo, look I at that whitewash just coming swamped. across that screen. And we saw that with, uh, with Winnie where he lost his board. He actually popped his leash right there, and Ben's oh. under the water. He's got a big set of lungs oh on the young fella, so he's okay. Oh, you and, know, he uh, was deep. That board was tombstoning. Was and uh, we saw when he loses his board in that situation, and it, the leash snapped, and he had to paddle it, swim out to his board caddy and Jake Stone, and uh, fortunately it didn't cost him. Watch this wave again from PRC. Leg stall right there in oh, the pocket. Perfect. Just right in the, in the zone right there. Comes out, hopes for a back backflip section. Doesn't happen, and that was a good scoring wave. So that'll... 6.68 for Pierre Louis Costes. Here's another on this angle. Wave. Here's another angle. That was a nice, clean, deep barrel from PLC. Uh, it was like right in the right below one of the bigger set waves, but still big and massive out there. I mean, these pe these riders are making it look very, very easy. But in fact, it, it's one of the hardest waves you can ride on a bodyboard. Well, Ben comes off the bottom here, hits the hits the lip, rolls over, and just that sw smacking water coming through from the side there just detonates on him. And he's somewhere underneath all that, and that's probably a good six foot of wash. He went down, looked for some lobsters, come back up, and out he goes. So Ben Player in his earlier heat today, scoring the first 10 of the comp second 10, I believe. Yeah, Yuri was the first. The first 10 of the day, and uh, that was for a beautiful Air Ford. So um, he's paddling back out. I believe he has. No, he doesn't have priority. Pierre's sitting there with priority and in the driver's seat. So Ben needs a 7.32 to take the lead from Pierre. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once more time. You can see Ryan Hardy in the white shirt and uh, <coughs> just as we were saying, keeping hydrated. And that bad guys, is just to interrupt, that's not vodka. That is water. <laughs> uh, keeping hydrated right there is Dave Winchester in the red jersey. He makes it to semifinal number two. He's going to face off the winner of this heat currently out in the water, quarterfinal number four. So Dave Winchester keeping hydrated, keeping that energy level high and getting ready Hopefully for him and the fellow Australians, he will bring home a world title. Hasn't been done since 2007 when Ben Player won the world title. It was Udi Valadao who came in second behind Ben Player in 2007. So it, uh, it is uh, definitely a handful of very experienced riders. Now in Sydney, we are looking at 1.19 a.m. in the morning. Are you still up in Sydney? Let me put something on their Facebook page. Oh, my internet is down. My internet is down here in the commentator's booth. We will get that situated ASAP. But let's check out the live feed right now. This is where we're at in the water. Ben Player, he is uh, in the green jersey. He is on the hunt right now for a 7.32. PLC, he is sitting comfortably with a 7.63 and a 6.68. Yeah, well, Ben's looking, like I say, that 7.32. In his last heat, he got a perfect 10 and I think a 7.8, something around there. So the waves are a bit different for this heat from what we saw in his first one. And there's Winnie once again. So I wonder what is going through his mind. Uh, poof, I don't know, but I'm sure his uh, family is up and, well, at least his wife is still watching. Yeah, well, I'm sure Amy's there in Mullumbimby with uh, his two daughters, Autumn and Summer. Do you think and they're watching or they're... Uh, I don't bed? know. I mean, they've just come back from France and they keep their kids up pretty late there. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a pretty special occasion. So maybe Amy's got the kids up and um, I'm sure they're tuned in and uh, watching their dad and uh, husband see what he can do here. So um, special moment for them, you know? I mean, it could be his first world title. Ooh, uh, my, my friends over in Portugal just put out their new release of the Vert Magazine online. Uh, go search um, Vert Magazine online. And uh, you'll hunt down the new issue of Vert that just uh, came down the pipeline this morning. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, this is the NMD versus Fronton Pro. The riders are waiting patiently. We will wait patiently for you to come back right after this. Okay, welcome back to the NMD versus Front On Pro. Here we have quarterfinal number four with Pierre-Louis Costes up against Ben Player, and Pierre is in the lead. He has a combined score of 14.31. Ben Player currently in second place, needing a 7.32 to jump ahead of the young Frenchman. And uh, the talk of the moment is Jeff Hubbard beaten in his first quarterfinal by Mark McCarthy, the South African, and that was an intense heat. Uh, Mark took off on a 10-foot bomb, went straight to the bottom, never come up, banged his head on the reef. Everyone was concerned for his health. He waved it away, paddled back out, and pulled a, uh, a barrel to an invert, I believe. I, didn't, <laughs> I was too busy yelling. <laughs> but he, he pulled an air move on the inside there and got the score to knock Jeff out of the front on pro. That has not, not, not knocked Jeff out of the world title race. No, He's still in, in the hunt. Yes, uh, Dave Winchester is the only other world title contender that can take the world title home. And he has to go head-to-head -head with the winner of this heat in semifinal number two. So, again, if Dave Winchester can beat and advance on out of semifinal number two, he will be your 2012 IBA world champion. So the only thing Jeff Hubbard can do is sit back and watch. Well, unfortunately for Jeff, he's in the same position as he was last year when Jace Finlay knocked him out. And that, that's nerve-wracking for, for both Jeff and Dave. Um, I know that Dave has to make the final. That, that's important. He, he's got to make the final. He, so far, he has two firsts and three thirds for his top five finishes. Jeff has three firsts, a fifth, and a ninth. 
So Jeff can't better that as Pierre oh. takes off on the right oh. hander here. It's a big one. Comes out with a truckload of spray oh, on nice. the shoulder there, and that was a nice wave. You said that was a right, but it's actually a left. Oh, Your so eyes I'm, are going I'm, I'm from Endo, man. I should know better than that. <laughs> well, I live in Endo, so yeah, I, I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> but yes, a big, deep barrel for PLC on that left right there. Let's take another look. It's all about being able to get to that speed line down in the bottom of the wave and then pull up and maintain a high line for more speed and PLC rode that wave perfectly. And look where he comes out at the top. Perfect. And if you look at that wave again, I'm sure we get another repeat of it. You watch how he has his board. He has his board kind of sideways to the wave, and that's so he can slide just down the wave a little bit before he catches an edge. If he's set too hard, he'll bounce on that one. So he was setting his body, almost body surfing Manny. He's using that board as a plane on the face. The face is curved. He slides down, then he scoops it into position, aims up high, comes out. So... Waiting for that score to drop. That was a big barrel. Let's and take a look. It's going to be high. It's One more be a time. High wave. A high score. You can see how difficult. Eight point six three, Benny. Oh my! So yes, the judges love that. That was a very difficult wave to ride. He slid. He pretty much took off under the barrel and uh, was able to maintain his his line through the barrel as that big cave just barreled over him. Sasha Specker is uh, in the room before uh, next to us. He has nothing to uh, be ashamed of or put his head down. Great showing at the Frontone Pro. It was uh, unfortunate he succumbed to the last few seconds of Dave Winchester in that last uh, quarterfinal. So Sasha Specker, a great run in the Frontone Pro. Now he gets to sit back and relax and hunt down a couple beers for us. Well, yeah, I mean, it's pretty unprofessional if we drink in front of the camera, but um, <laughs> we've done a long <laughs> job. Uh, my, my job has been half the job of Manny, so his is well earned. But again, that wave appears, an 8.63, this is for a barrel. So no, no aerial move that we could see off the end, but that just shows you that scores are changing. And if you go on the left-hander, not the right-hander, the left-hander, and negotiate it and come out clean, you're going to get rewarded. So we talked about Pierre with his board on that wave and how he positioned the board, drove out, and he got an 8.63. So that oh. puts Ben Player in a tough position. We only have 7.7 7 minutes, 40 seconds to go as we count down. And Ben needs a 9.26. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, again, this is it. We're coming down to the wire on the 2012 IBA World Tour. This is the Grand Slam Series. We are still on the hunt for a world champion here on the 2012 IBA World Tour. Dave Hubbard. I mean, <laughs> I keep saying that. Too many Daves and Jeffs, many. It's hard. Yeah, Dave Winchester ben and no. Jeff Hubbard are both up for the hunt of that title. Dave Winchester or Jeff Hubbard, he has been knocked out of the event. The only thing he can do now is sit back and watch what unfolds in the next few heats. Dave Winchester, he has to make it out of his semifinal number two to become world champion. champion. Well, how about these champion. South Africans, Manny? Champion. We've got uh, Jared Houston and Mark McCarthy in the, next, in, the, in the first semi. This had Sasha Specker get knocked out in the uh, third quarter final. That's three guys in the final. So they're definitely coming to the fore and becoming a world force. I think there's something in the rotis they're eating down in South Africa, brew, but I'm not quite sure. What's a roti? It's like a burrito. Uh. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I thought right. it was the uh, Elan, which is some sort of giant deer that a, a guy I played footy with used to go on and on about. But P uh, PLC having a look there at the uh, left-hander, nothing doing. So your world champion will be determined today. At the end of uh, today, we will see a new world champion. Or, a, a, yes, a new world champion and a new winner of the Fronton Pro. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Manny V here holding it down with Mez in the hot seat. Quarterfinal number four out in the water. Five minutes, 50 seconds remaining. We can't thank you enough for tuning in from all over the world. If you haven't already done so, <coughs> text, email, message all your buddies. Tell them to watch. <coughs> We're coming down to the wire here at the NMD. <laughs> Man, he's got a frog in his throat, local uh, canary and tree frog, <laughs> and uh, they're always hard to deal with. But um, <coughs> we'll get him some, uh, some uh, what do you call it, refreshments? Yes. A little liquid. <laughs> Drown the frog out. But anyway, back to the heat, and Ben's paddling for oh this one. Oh, my. Look at nine, this. Out the back. A 9.3. He's oh. having a look. And Any takers? Let it go. Oh, P no. PLC, yeah. taking a look. Look how thing. big that is. Oh, my. And it is starting to change, Manny. These left-handers aren't quite what they were before. So with a five minutes to go, 
Ben needs a 9.26 to come in first and take on Dave Winchester in the semi-final. It's not oh. beyond Ben, as we said before. He scored a 10 in his uh, round six heat. And that was an amazing air fall with a perfect landing on a good set wave. So it's not beyond Ben. Piers having a look at this inside wave, decides not to go. He's doing that because Ben has priority. But these inside waves have been turning it on Manny. Oh, my, yes. I mean, that's what uh, the riders are trying to determine, whether to wait for the big bombs or come into the inside and catch these little perfect insiders. But if you do that, you're just that much closer to the reef, and it gets more shallower as you take off on these uh, the, the medium-sized waves. Ben Player taking a look at this one. Here he goes. Here he goes off the bottom. A smaller wave. Sets his board forward of him. Comes up. What can he do here? Oh, big my! Back flip. That's a big backflip. I think that one-ups Pierre at his own game. Yes, that was a perfect backflip. Landed perfectly on the flats and uh, makes his way back out. But Ben Player, no, he heard what PLC got on his backflip, and here he is uh, putting his backflip down well, on the scores. Pierre got a 7.63 for his backflip. Now, Ben's could potentially get higher than that. Uh, it won't put him into first place because you need to get a 9.26. As we look again at Ben's wave, leans forward, comes up, hips the lip, eyes the landing, lands smooth, whips it around. So a very smooth backflip from Ben Player there. So like I said before, it won't beat his nine, no, won't get the 9.2 that he needed as we look again. Oh, but that will wave will better possibly his seven point ride. We're still, I mean, his uh, 3.68. Ben Player, what do you got on this guy? Well, I've known Ben since he was 15 years old. Um, he went for a, a photo shoot for Quicksilver. And uh, he was a tiny little skinny kid. And he was riding a giant Turbo 3 board with an oversized Quicksilver sil rash vest. And a friend of mine, Dave Appleby, said, watch this kid, he's going to be a world champion. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he was. <laughs> Two times world champion. And uh, we've been together pretty much ever since. Um, we're good mates. And uh, it's great having Ben over here and great having been a part of, of his career for the last 15, 16 years. So um, it's been a journey watching what he's done, watching what he's achieved. And uh, yeah, it's what you sort of dream for. You know, as a, as a team, when you're looking for a team, you pick one guy that you think you can sort of invest into and uh, he can help the brand. That's exactly what he's done. So um, he's been that marquee rider for us and he continues to be as he looks at this bomb. Oh my, is he really going to take a look? He is going, oh, he pulls back at the last second. Oh, that looked like us. That was open, Manny. It, it stayed open. open. I don't know if he didn't feel comfortable in the position where he was at, but PLC. Well, he wasn't in position. He wasn't in priority. As Pierre goes again on the left hand. Let's see what he can do with this one. Oh, Gunning deep behind the section. Comes oh, out of that one. and he comes out of that as well. He is stoked right there with a little fist pump on Ooh. the way to the channel. PLC with another big barrel of a wave on that left hander. So the lefts are starting to open up a little bit more. They are, like the predict. And here goes Ben oh, here. Oh, 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 my. Big landing now. W interesting wave exchange there. So that wave, oh, invert. Oh, is yeah. he going to pull out in front of that whitewash? Well, that's pretty much the heat over, unless Pierre can paddle out there. But Pierre went on the left hander. And before he got rewarded with the 8.63, he needed to better the 7.63, which I think he would do based on that first little score on the left, Manny. Well, we have one minute and 30 seconds again. remaining. Again, Let's the watch. board sideways. Pulls up into it. Comes up high. You watch. Going through with the spit, and he's stoked. He claims that one. His claims are a bit lower this year, Manny. Not the big high claims. Little, <laughs> little punch claims. You yeah. know, he's getting older. He's getting more mellow. So we'll see. Waiting for those scores to drop. And here's Ben's wave. We didn't see the start of it. What's he going to do? Stall. He really needs a barrel here. Okay, a bit of a bounce on that one. Critical move in a oh critical my. section. That is insane. Oh Look at that. Ho ho ho. Textbook air forward. Sticks the landing. That's got to be a high score, Manny. That is right. I mean, Ben Player did so what he did in the last heat so with a big Louis Costes, Costes, sorry, 8 8.93. 8.93 for Pierre Louis Costes. That means Ben needs a 9.73 to win. We're still waiting for the scores to drop. Coming all the way down to the bottom of the list here. Ben Player's score is still waiting to drop. So. So hold on tight. 30 seconds. Look at this thing staring at Ben Player down in the face. Is this the end of the road for Ben Player? We're still waiting for the scores to drop. PLC is on the outside. There is 24 seconds remaining. The last scores are starting to drop. What is the situation? Where are we now? It's not a no change. Ben's last wave, 8.85. Not enough to take out Pierre Louis Costes. That 8.93 <coughs> barrel on the left hander took was enough to oh. push Pierre ahead of Ben Player. So. 
Pierre-Louis Costes will now face Dave Winchester in that all-important